Hello everyone, today I'll be showing you how to self-host Udo18 on an Ubuntu 24 server using Docker. I personally use the same setup for my opensourcehustle.com website and I'm using it to share blogs and also I use other modules like the CRM module to track down leads for my freelancing projects and I use invoicing to create invoices and send them to my clients. I'll be following my article on opensourcehustle.com and I'll have the link to that article in the description. Let's go down to the prerequisites. You'll need an Ubuntu 24 server and you need to have a domain name pointing to that server. I'll be using Vulture to create the server. Vulture is simple to use and the pricing is clear. Also, I'll have a referral link in the description where you can get 300 credit to test out Vulture. Let's create the server. I'm gonna click shared CPU. I'm gonna select Frankfurt. I'm gonna go with high frequency and I'm going to select just one CPU and one gig of RAM. I'm going to disable backups. And for the operating system, I'm gonna select Ubuntu 24.04. For the host name, I'm gonna call it Udo Tutorial and I'm going to deploy the server. Once the server is deployed, we'll need to add an A record to our domain name to point to the server. So let's copy the IP address, go to your domain provider and create a record. We'll need an A record, paste the IP address and for the name, I'm gonna select the root. I'm gonna turn off the proxy setting and save it. So now with the server created and with the domain name pointing to that server, we are ready to proceed with the article. To make things simple, I've added this section over here where you could put your domain name and it would change the article based on your domain name. So my domain is alexandbloom.com and if I click apply, you will find that the article has been tailored to your domain name. Let's access our server using SSH. Now I'm going to create a user for me, which I'll use to set up everything. We can use the add user command to create a new user. And we need to add this user to the sudo list. So type vsudo, scroll down to the root user. I'm going to copy paste root user and I'm going to change the root to my user. So now we have root privilege. Now I can log in with my user, so I'm going to exit the server and I'm going to connect again using my user. Another thing we could do is change the time zone on the server. This will be more convenient, especially when you're doing uh, cron jobs and certificate renewals, so you know exactly when the certificate renewal will happen. Now I'm going to list the time zones and I'm going to look for Amman where I am based. And now I can set the time zone to Asia Amman. Now if I check the time zone, I am in Asia Amman. If you want to list all the time zones, you can use list time zones. Now we are ready to proceed with the tutorial. Let's install Docker. This is done first by adding the repository. Now with the repository added, we can install Docker and Docker Compose using apt. Since we can have multiple Udo installations on the same server, let's organize things by creating a directory with our domain name. Now inside that directory, let's create the necessary directories for our Docker setup. Next, we are going to create our compose.yaml file and add the following directives to it. So here we are creating four containers, a DB container, which will have PostgreSQL, an Udo container, an Nginx container, and a Certbot container for certificate renewals. For the DB container, we are using PostgreSQL version 16. We are mapping the containers port 5432 to host machines port 5432. We are providing these variables, which will create a Postgres user, Udo, with the password Udo, which we will give to our Udo application. PG data is the location where the data will be stored. That location will be linked to our Udo DB data volume. Volume. This will ensure that the data is persistent and even if you delete this container and recreate it, it will still use the previous data. Next we have the Udo container, it will be using Udo version 18. It depends on the DB container, so this will make sure that the DB container is created first before the Udo container. We're mapping the container port 8069 to the host machine's port 8069. We have three volumes, Udo web data volume will contain Udo's file for persistence. The config directory will contain 
contain Udo's config directory. So we can add here udo.conf file and I've included an add-ons directory where you could add your custom modules. Next, we are using the command for Udo to initialize the database where we're providing the DB user and password which we created earlier in the DB container. Now the ibase command is used to initialize this database. After we run this compose.yaml file, we need to re remove this flag. If you keep it, each time you restart the container or recreate it, it will recreate the database and we don't need that. We need the database to stay persistent. Next, we have the nginx container which will use the latest version and we will be using port 80 and 443 for secure connection. nginx-conf volume will contain the nginx configuration for our domain. nginx-include will include additional configurations such as gzip and compressions. nginx-ssl will contain our SSL settings. nginx certbot ww will be used for the Acme challenge when certbot will be generating certificates. nginx certbot-conf will contain our let's encrypt certificates. This one, as you can see, is shared with the certbot container. So when certbot will generate the certificates and add them here, they will be shared with the nginx container as well. And same thing when it comes to the Acme challenge. The same directory is shared with the nginx container. And our nginx container depends on Udo container. Let's save this compose.yaml file. And now we need to make sure that UFW allows HTTP and HTTPS. This is necessary for us to access the application and certbot will require these ports to request the certificates. We can check the status and we can see that we're allowing port 80 and port 443. Next, let's create the initial nginx configuration file and let's add this server block to it. So it will be listening to port 80 for our domain name and we added this location block for the certificate Acme challenge, which certbot will use to request certificates. Let's save this and now we can launch our DB, Udo and nginx containers so initially it will pull the images and will create the containers next let's add the gzip config file and add the following directives to it this will make requests to our Udo application faster by compressing contents like HTML, CSS, and JavaScript now we are ready to request the SSL certificate using the certbot container before running this command just make sure you are using the correct email address we can see that the certificates were received successfully. Now let's create the DH param, which will secure our key exchange even further. Now let's add our SSL configuration to our Nginx volume. Add the directives and save. Now we will need to modify our initial Nginx configuration to use HTTPS instead of HTTP as we generated the certificates. So clear the initial configuration file and you could do so by clicking Ctrl K which will remove each line. Now let's add our new server blocks, which will handle both HTTP and HTTPS requests. The HTTP requests will be redirected to use HTTPS and the HTTPS will use our SSL configuration file and our certificates. It will also include our gzip config file. I've also added three security headers. The rest of the location blocks send our traffic to our OODA application and cache the static files. Let's save our new configuration and now we need to restart Nginx. Let's check the status of our containers by running sudo docker compose ps and we can see that the three containers are running the db container the nginx container and the udo container the certbot container is not running as it runs only when we are requesting these certificates speaking of certificates let's add a cron job that will request certificates 8 a.m every sunday if the certificate is expiring in less than 30 days it will renew it and reload our nginx container if not it will skip the renewal so let's access our cron tab click one to use nano go to the bottom and add the following directive. Make sure that the path to your compose.yaml file is correct. In my case, it is located under home, my user, docker, then my domain name. There is two paths here, one to reload the nginx and one to run the certbot renew. So make sure you add the correct path to both of them and save the cron job. So we can already access the website by going to your domain name. So as you can see, I am able to access alexandbloom.com and I can log in. Now there is the manage database option here and we definitely don't want this to be available for the public. So we can hide this option by adding the following directives to the udo.conf file. So let's create the udo.conf file and add the following options to it. If you are planning to add custom add-ons, uncomment this one and you can add your custom add-ons in the add-ons directory. Also added the proxy mode as true. This will let the udo application know that it is 
is served behind the proxy, which is Nginx. Let's save this and let's restart our Udo application. Now let's refresh our website. And as you can see, the manage database option is gone. The default login and passwords are admins. So write admin admin. Let's try to activate one of the modules. I'm going to go for the website module. I'm going to skip and start from scratch. And I'm going to select the flower theme. As you can see, the application is running pretty well for a server with just one CPU and one gig of RAM. And it has successfully installed the website module. Now I'm going to go to settings. Then I'm going to go to users. I'm going to select the admin user, go to actions, and I'm going to change password. Then type in the new password, change password. Now with our current setup, let's destroy the containers and recreate them using sudo docker compose down. Now let's recreate the containers using sudo docker compose up and the D flag to run in the background. Let's refresh the website. And actually, I was able to log in using my admin admin username and password. Why is that? That's because we did not remove the iBase flag. If you do not remove the iBase flag from the compose.yaml file, it will recreate the database. So all the data that you have saved previously will be gone. To eliminate this issue, let's remove that flag. So nano compose.yaml file and in the udo container, in the command, remove the iBase flag. Save the compose.yaml file. Now let's reset the password for our user again by going to settings, users, select the admin user, change password. And now let's destroy our containers and recreate them. And let's see if we can log in with our new password. Choose admin and a new password. And we can see that the data remained persistent. Now let me show you how you can add custom modules to our Udo application. First, you'll need to add your custom module to our Udo directory. And you can use FileZilla to do so. So in FileZilla, connect to a new server, put the host IP, put the login type as normal, put your user and password and connect to it. Once you're connected, go to your user's directory, go to Docker, go to your domain name and go to the add-ons directory. Here we need to add our custom modules. Here I have a hustle website, which is a custom website module, and I'm going to drag and drop it into our add-ons directory on the server. Now on the server, if I list the contents of the add-ons directory, I can see that the hustle website module has been added. Next, we are going to uncomment the add-on setting in the udo config file. So nano config udo.conf and uncomment the add-ons path. Save this file. Next, I'm going to destroy the containers using sudo docker compose down. Now let's recreate the containers using sudo docker compose up and the D flag to run in the background. Let's refresh our website. Let's go to settings, scroll down, activate the developer mode, go to apps. Next, click update app list. Now let's research for the hustle module and we can find it. So let's activate it. Now let's visit our website and we can see that the custom website hustle module has been activated. In the end, I have two links which you can use to test your website. SSL Labs is used to test your SSL certificate. So let's check the quality on our SSL certificate. And it gave us an A plus rating. Next, we can check our security headers. Type in your domain name and it gave us a B rating as I excluded the content security policy and permission policy as they require more fine tuning. So that's it with this tutorial. I hope you found this useful. The Udo community version provides lots of useful modules that you could use for your personal projects as I have. Thank you for watching.